This time in Goss's Garage, we're going to talk about shocks and struts. See, the words are used almost interchangeably, and people don't really seem to know the difference between the two, but the reality of it is that they are very different critters in what they do on the car. Now, both of them keep the car from bouncing up and down as you go over bumps, but here's the real difference. This is a typical shock absorber, and the shock absorber is just a self-contained unit that does nothing for the suspension of the car, it just does away with the bounciness that the springs give the car. Now keep in mind that shocks do not have anything to do with the height of the car. If you've got a car that is drooping on one side or something like that, unless it has some type of air suspension on it that may incorporate air shocks, well, the shock absorber has nothing at all to do with the height of the vehicle. Now, that isn't the case with a strut. Now, here we have a typical strut. Now, if we look at this, we see that the coil spring is part of the strut, and it's a spring that holds the car up. Now, the strut goes beyond that because the strut is attached to the body of the car up here in this movable upper mount. The spring then supports the weight of the vehicle. The strut itself, that's like a shock absorber inside and it prevents the up and down movement. And then down here, this bottom of the strut, it attaches to the suspension of the car. So a strut does several things. Among them is that it positions the wheel on the car. Keeps the wheel at the right angle and so on. But one of the downsides to these is that the angles, the alignment angles on the wheels change as you go around corners because this lower end is attached to the wheel, the upper end is attached to the body, so the upper portion of it moves with the body where with a shock absorber you have control arms and links and different things like that that can allow the alignment angles to be more constant during cornering. So the strut is a cheap way to make a suspension system on a car. Alright, now, the things that you're going to look for. First, remember that there are huge differences from one shock absorber or one strut to another. But one of the big things that you're looking for is to make sure that the shock or strut, whichever your car happens to have, that it has the ability to control the bounce of the car. Here we have a demonstration that shows the difference in the rebound between a good shock, we bring this one down, and if we notice it comes back really slowly. That means the hydraulics inside it are working properly. But over here, it's worn out and there's no control whatsoever. No matter which you have, shocks or struts, one of the primary things that the unit has to do is to keep the car from bouncing. So that's one of the tests that you're going to perform on the car. And that is to put your knee on the bumper uh, ahead of or behind each wheel, bounce the car up and down, and then let go of it in the down position. If the shock or strut on that end of the car, on that side, right by that wheel, is good, the car will return to the center and it will stop. But if it's bad, it will make more than one oscillation. So it won't come back to center and stop instantly, it'll continue to bounce. Now that's one thing. The other thing is you have to look at the various things like the rubber bushings in them. Most all of them have some form of rubber bushing that m attaches them to the chassis or the body of the car. Those things go bad over time even though the shock or the strut itself may not. You also look for leaks. If there's any fluid running out of the shock or strut, any of those things would mean that it's time to replace the units on your car. Now when it comes time to replace them, you look at what we have here. Here we have one that's heavy duty. 
Here we have a standard one. We can see that there's a big difference in the size of them. There's a big difference in the valving and things like that. So you have to determine what type of ride you want, what type of control you want. You know, if you're into high performance, you want a high performance shock or strut. If you have a truck and you haul heavy things with it, you may want a heavy duty truck type shock and so on. So you have to do your research to see what best fits your needs and your driving style. See, because some of these heavy duty ones, they can be really pretty impressive. Like this strut here, very heavy duty. See, if you take a hold of this, this pulls in and out when it's on the car. And you can see that it's really, really tough. And that would make this car ride, well, ride really hard. That is, until you look at it and it's actually completely shot. So that's what happens there. But the reality of it is that yes, some of them are really stiff, just like I was uh, pretending there. And if you put that on your family sedan that's supposed to ride smooth, it's going to ride like a buckboard. So do your research and replace the shocks and struts when they can no longer control the bounce or they're starting to leak or something like that. And uh, buy the type that best fits your style of driving, your style of car, and what you hope to achieve in the way it rides and handles. And if you have a question or comment, drop me a line right here at radio at goss-garage.com.